long time ago, one mystic soul was shown that there was a special reward reserved in heaven for those who built a church. People have built our churches and we have received them. If we decide to destroy them, to disfigure them, to disrespect them, we can expect a corresponding reward in purgatory. A consecrated church has a guardian angel. There, where the Blessed Sacrament is reserved, there is a whole court of angels adoring day and night. It is known that souls who misbehave in church, for instance, talking loudly in that same sacred presence, have to suffer the consequences in purgatory, and it may happen that they are doing it in the church itself a part of the time. That is known to have happened as well. We forget that when we walk into a consecrated church, we are walking out of time and space into another geography, extra-territorial. It is claimed by heaven, and God has his foothold there on earth. He reigns. In recent times, there has crept in to our celebratory mode, a happy clappy mode which is not worthy of the angels. And the way in which in news bulletins sometimes a funny remark is made at the conclusion of the whole bulletin, so too creeps into our celebration one funny remark at the dismissal, as though the whole thing that had preceded was merely a joke, and the real thing is the fun and games of life. Alas, the priest is a mystagogue, and he leads into that very presence that we cannot see, but which is very much there, the court of angels, and they are gravely offended if we misbehave in too human a fashion there where they are making up for what we do badly. In student days, a fellow Norbertine said to me that this is the day to go to St. John Latron. You can actually see a part of the Basilica from our rooms in the Norbertine College. It wasn't that far away. It was on a hill. And we did. And we were also keen to be aware that the very sermon that we had at the Office of Readings was preached there, way back in the early church, by St. Caesar of Arles. And so one could take up those words and relive the moment Indeed, it is essentially the same church that was built by Constantine and has been the parish church of the Holy Father ever since. Well, that sermon, preached in that ancient place of prayer, has this message. That as on these great days of dedication, the whole church is filled with splendour, light and charmed, incense and perfume, adored to the utmost, so too to welcome the King, the temple of our soul must be well adorned, the grime of menial sin removed, and above all attention and cleanliness in such a way that the Lord does reign over our physique and our mind and therefore over our soul. The way we dress, the way we vest, the way we comport ourselves physically reflects order and the angelic mode that surrounds us. But also the way in which the Lord in this very gospel indicates that he does not want clutter comes into it. Auferta ista hinc, 
take these things away from here. And he makes a point, physically, as one would in the Middle East, with energy and conviction, like the prophets of old, he overturns the offensive objects. The house of God, the house of his father, is to be a place of prayer. So too our own body. And what is in it, the brain and the memory, and therefore the soul residing in it. In concrete terms, we need to take out of here the clutter of too much interior hustle and bustle, interior noise, interference, turbulence. A holy nun in the 1930s, Sister Consolata Ritone, was shown by the Lord that this absence of inward tranquillity was a great barrage to him in his work in the soul. He would tolerate more easily other things in her soul than this lack of interior tranquillity, calm. That applies to each of us. It's rather as in the Second World War, England, while being heavily bombarded, by the Luftwaffe defended itself very well with all kinds of barrage balloons and anything which could stop them from getting through. So too we defend ourselves in reverse by a barrage of interior noise lest we dare to let the Lord really be heard and make us uncomfortable. It can happen in our prayer life, making sure that we're very faithful and therefore catching up with all the prayers that have to be said, but in noise mode, a never receptive mode, a barrage against the Holy Ghost, a barrage against daring to look at Jesus in the eyes. And then when we're in prayer, all the clutter of the interior war that's going on on many fronts at the same time. All the noise of conversations which perhaps didn't have to happen anyway and conversations in which we were too much engaged because much energy is spared if one doesn't talk all the time in a conversation but receives. You don't have to be always in 101 activity in a conversation. One can be somewhat passive and tranquil there too and that also comes into God. When we are with him, we can be passive when with our God, removing all these things from our soul and as the church itself belonging to God who wants to claim this bit of humanity, our soul, for himself and delights in the peace of the interior man made calm.